This is a BBC News special report with Mark Hololo, focusing on the limits of science. Good evening. Tonight on BBC News special report, I investigate the limitations and dangers of our ever-expanding world of science and technology. We will take a closer look on how scientific and technological advances have changed our daily routines and lifestyle, especially in the fields of industry, medicine, and electronics. We will explore where science has been, where it currently stands, and most importantly, where it is headed. My investigation ultimately sheds light on the dangers of the pursuit of knowledge, while of course not forgetting its numerous benefits. Products used to be made by humans. First, items were made by individuals, one by one, using nothing but hands and tools. This was a long and delicate process. In the 1900s, during the Industrial Revolution, the production of these items dramatically changed. Industry boomed partly due to the invention of the assembly line. The economy swelled and jobs were created. Henry Ford, the assembly line's creator, saw his company's value skyrocket. Now, a hundred years later, finding handmade products is a rarity due to the use of robots. These machineries work several times faster than humans, for free. Millions of jobs have now been replaced by smarter machinery, but is that really a better option? With the unemployment and poverty rates on the constant increase, maybe it's time we question ourselves on our reliance on robotics. What used to be a far-fetched prospect is now becoming more of a reality. If we distribute all work to inanimate and non-human items, what work will there be left to accomplish? At the beginning of the 20th century, the average life expectancy rate was 47 years. More than a century later, the average life expectancy has risen over 63% to 78 years. This is in large part due to the advancement of vaccinations, medical procedures, and increased knowledge of the human body. But for as far as health and medicine has come, there have to be some drawbacks, right? For example, take a look at the process of cloning and reproduction of organisms. There are ethical debates on whether cloning plants, animals, and especially humans is morally correct. Let's examine both sides of the issue. In terms of benefits, cloning and reproduction of organisms has an unbelievable potential. The reproduction of tissues, organs, bones, and other body parts would be able to cure a large majority of medical tribulations. Skin for burn victims, brain cells for the brain damage, spinal cord cells for the disabled, hearts, lungs, livers, and kidneys could all be reproduced. Conditions such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, heart failure, degenerative joint disease, and other problems may be curable if human cloning and its technology are not banned. The idea that the human embryo has a right not to be killed is a living human However, being. opponents of this um, also have a strong argument. The, the media, television, cinemas, and fiction have often explored the dangers of meddling with the order of life. Let's assume the practice of cloning human tissue becomes legal. How long will it take before someone oversteps the line and creates a complete clone of another human being? Is it truly still a human being, or just another experiment? Will they feel like an outsider? Will they contain the same thought processes? Can two separate but identical life forms actually be considered the same? These may be questions that will never be answered. Also, as medical science continues to advance, we increase the number of diseases of affluence. These are typically diseases and health disorders that arise in areas of wealth. It is thought that while new technology prolongs the lifespan, it decreases the actual quality of life. While patients are still alive, they do not experience the freedoms and rights of healthy human beings. This raises the delicate question of if leaving scientific matters unattended is actually a better option. Did you notice a change in my voice? That is because it is computer generated. Computers are constantly getting smarter, faster, smaller, etc. According to Moore's law, the power of computers doubles every 18 months. For comparison, collective human knowledge increases at a small fraction of that. Someday during the next 30 to 50 years, the capacity of computers will surpass that of humans. The subsequent problems that may arise from this are unclear. Will this leave humans in perpetual doubt that they are correct? 
Will computers be able to comprehend emotions as well as accurately display them? Who is to say that computers will not become corrupt, like some of their human counterparts? On the other hand, think of all of the positive possibilities that smarter minds can bring to the table. They could solve cures for diseases, answer deep moral questions, and simply find the best solutions. This topic is truly a two-sided argument. One that only time will solve. Ultimately, the Earth we live on is our single greatest tool. The people, places, organisms, and events hold together our collective knowledge. They are our past, present, and future. Scientific advances will forever be based upon previous ones. The innovation of changing something from the past to create something new drives these advances. However, with all the tools we possess, we are also bestowed with an overwhelming sense of confidence in our abilities. This may lead to a slack in responsibility and a lack of forethought about the possibility of danger. We will become so consumed with grand ambitions that we will allow ourselves to become victims. Exploration is by virtue a human quality. The pursuit of knowledge will undoubtedly always have its costs and benefits. It is our personal decision to decide which path is correct. For the sake of ourselves and others, let's hope we continue to make the right choices. This has been a BBC News special report with Mark Colvillo.